Welcome to another unit in this SPSS course. This time I'm going to talk about the so-called multinomial logit. Well, maybe you heard about the logit regression approach. The multinomial logit is just an extension of this. Whereas with the normal logit, our dependent variable was binary, meaning it could be either zero or one. With the multinomial logit, it can take, well, Sounds strange if I say can take any value. So it could be, let's formulate this a little bit differently, could be nominal in nature with more than two possible outcomes. Could, however, also be ordinal. So as long as it's nominal, and then, well, it would only make sense if it has three or more categories then we could use the multinomial locket. So for example, if here I have clothing sizes with the comment that XS is not available, there was no one in our sample with XS, I basically have here five different possible outcomes. And if I want to use this as dependent variable, that's actually where I would go with a multinomial locket. Well, how do I actually proceed with this multinomial logit? I go to analyze, and then, well, it's again regression analysis, so I go to regression. And here in the lower part, right next to the binary logistic, which is the logit as we know it, we find multinomial logistic. So I click here. This also looks similar to what we've seen from the logit. So here I have my dependent variable, so I would put my clothing size. And down here, I have factors and covarides. So at this point, I want to treat the variable as a whole and not split this up in zero, one in different categories. So I'm using my variables here as covarides. Here, I'm specifically using gender, height, and weight. I'm putting those here. If I do not change anything at this moment, he will start, and we see this here, and use the last value as reference category. So last value here with me would actually be XXL. If I don't want this, I could click here and select a specific different reference category. So as I said, we do not have XS, so the smallest one would be S. So S in this case would be reference category. This would be XXL. I could, however, also set this for example, to three, this would set the reference category to M. So let's try this. Click continue and OK. Now, first off, we get here an overview of how many observations in each group there are. And then the real output starts. So first off, I have here mostly the likelihood ratio test, which can be interpreted as something comparable to the F-test we know from linear regression. However, well, we cannot use the F-distribution here in this context. It's no longer F-distributed. So we need to use a roundabout way, and that's by using the Likert ratio test. However, the idea behind this is still similar to what it was before. That's also what we see in the table down here. The null hypothesis is that all parameters of that effect are zero. So same thing as with the F test in normal linear regression. And well, we have this here for the full model. And we have a comparable test for the impact of each variable. So this would be like, let's call this our T tests, if we were to have the impact of one specific variable in general. So here we see, while well, F2 and 3, so height and weight, have a significant impact in the general model, on the overall model, gender does not. And well, we have a second information in between here, that's a pseudo R squared. We cannot even calculate the normal R squared as is, so we get three estimates. Those three estimates can actually deviate from each other quite severely, as we can see here. 
However, they give a first good impression of the overall size or quality of our model. So here, even if, if it were only here 58%, would still be a relatively good model. So this tells us our model is not so bad in explaining the fluctuations in the dependent. However, the more interesting part, that's down here, our parameter estimates. And here we see an outcome for each of our different groups, except for the reference category. And that's because the effects here are always in regard to the reference category. So it's like running four different log uh, logistic regressions, S versus M, L versus M, XL versus M, XXL versus M. Well, it's not perfectly like this, but you can imagine this to be in a similar way. And well, what we can see here is the impact of each of the different variables on getting into this specific category as compared to M. The same problem persists as with the logit. You cannot really interpret these coefficients as with one unit increase means an increase of so-and-so units. However, the sign will tell you whether the general effect is positive or negative in nature. If you want to see a bit more, you can take a look here at the column for the exp of the coefficient, which would then be if all the other values were at their mean, then this would be the effect if we would increase this by one. So this is one thing. However, we can, aside from the sign, also take a look whether this has a significant impact or not. Let's see the significance levels. Now we see the first one, gender in this case, is not significant. The other two are. However, as compared to L, gender is significant. F2 is significant, however, F3 is not. And here, again, we have the same thing as with the first. Gender is not significant, but height and weight are, and here the same. And we also see some kind of developments in the corresponding coefficients. For example, with the effect of gender, it was roughly minus 1.9, minus 1.3, minus 1.1 and plus 0.3. Same thing for the other ones. So that's basically if the effect actually increases with each of those groups. Not necessarily does this has to be, have to be the case, especially, well, if your dependent variable is really nominal in nature and not ordinal as here. With ordinal variables, this actually would be something which could be expected. So if the variable is ordinal in nature, the effects look different, are not developing in a certain pattern, then you could at least become a bit skeptical. With purely nominal data, could be anything, doesn't have to be any trend at all here. And well, that's basically then all there is. So instead of running one regression, we're having here more or less four different partial regressions, which make up the whole model. This is then extended to giving us also an idea how important in the overall view of things the different variables are. Then we see that gender in general could be excluded from the model because it has not this much of an importance or place not this much of an importance in its general explanatory effect. However, height and weight are really important, even though here in this subcase, the F3 is not significant. But this is only in one case of all the four ones. And well, as I said, that's all there is. So I hope you enjoyed listening to it. And if you want to see additional insights, feel free to visit the rest of this course.
or have a look at the corresponding playlist. I say goodbye and see you next time.